Her three great leaders and their staffs of military and political advisors face the inevitable battery of cameras. Will not be under any conditions be an intervention in Cuba by United States Armed Forces. Great success in space when the Russians pushed a man across the threshold. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But the wall still remains and divides the city. The year is 1984. While George Orwell's predictions hadn't quite come to fruition, the world was far from an idyllic place. The rise of Gorbachev and the de-escalation of the Cold War was starting to take shape. But at this point, the tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union were still high. After several incidents in 1983, like the Abel Archer exercises and the Soviet takedown of a civilian flight from Korean Air, both powers were yet again preparing for a possible nuclear war. At the closest point to an armed conflict since the Cuban Missile Crisis, both sides of the Iron Curtain were still investing heavily in science and technology, both with military and civilian purposes. While the US launched programs like the Strategic Defense Initiative that would supposedly take down Soviet missiles using lasers, the USSR had the Academy of Sciences of the Soviet Union in Moscow at the forefront of their development. Computers were one of the main areas of research at the time, and the Soviets invested both in analyzing Western machines and in developing their own. It is right here in the academy that we find Alexei Pajitnov, a young Russian engineer that worked in the Artificial Intelligence Research Department. Alexei's job consisted in testing the various computers that the academy received by running simple programs that he had developed for them. These simple programs were quite varied, but for a while Pajitnov had wanted to develop a video game to test in these computers. While video games had arrived to the Soviet Union, they hadn't had the same impact and popularity as they did in the West, since computers in the USSR were more scarce and expensive. However, Bajitnov had an idea for a puzzle game that would use pantominos, shapes formed by five identical squares, which were commonly used in many physical puzzles that Alexei enjoyed. After his department received a Russian Electronica 60 to test, he started developing his game. Soon, Pajitnov realized that pentominos were too complex to manage, so he decided to swap them for tetrominos, which are made from four squares instead of five. And with that adjustment, Tetris was born. In Tetris, tetrominos, also known as Tetris pieces, appear randomly one at a time, in one of their seven possible configurations. The piece appears at the top of the screen, and instantly starts falling down towards the bottom. The player can control where the piece lands within a 10 square wide area by moving it left or right and spinning the piece to control its orientation. Once the piece reaches the bottom, it locks into place and a new one appears at the top, which is now controlled by the player. Pieces can stack on top of each other, but if a line of 10 squares is completely full from left to right, the squares on that line disappear and the ones on top fall down into that free space. Completing lines grants points to the player, gaining a bonus from completing more than one line at a time, with four being the maximum, which necessarily uses the line piece and is known as completing a Tetris, which grants the biggest amount of points. As the player completes lines, the pieces start falling faster, which makes them harder to manage and position where desired. If the pieces stack up to the top of the screen, make it impossible for a new piece to appear, the game is over. This means the objective of Tetris is to get as many points as possible before the pieces inevitably reach the top and the game finishes. After Pajitnov finished development of the game, he went on to show it to his friends and colleagues, and Tetris slowly started spreading throughout the Soviet Union via word of mouth. However, Tetris's true explosion in popularity wouldn't come until much later, in 1989, and it didn't happen in the USSR, but in the West. The Japanese video game company Nintendo was preparing to launch their first portable console, the Game Boy, 
and after obtaining a license, decided to bundle every machine along with Tetris, and market the game along with the console. The popularity of both the game and the console fed into each other, making both into mass phenomenons, with Tetris selling more than 35 million copies during the Game Boy's lifetime. Coinciding with the fall of the Iron Curtain and the eventual destruction of the Berlin Wall, this video game hailing from Mother Russia finally obtained the global praise it deserved. After this initial surge in popularity, Tetris was quickly ported to many other platforms, and across the following years received both sequels that added features to the original game, and copies that completely flipped the game's concept on its head. Even today, Tetris is still relevant, with new games being developed and still adding new features, official competitions being held, and having become one of the best-selling video games in history. Tetris World Champion, 16-year-old Joseph Saley has done it! But why did Tetris become so popular? And how has it managed to stay relevant for so long? Well, first we need to talk about the game itself. As explained earlier, Tetris has a very simple design. And while some added features like holding a piece for later, or a shadow that indicates where the next piece will land, have become staples of the game, the core structure remains very much the same. This simplicity and basic set of rules makes Tetris into a fundamentally flawless game, with a similar philosophy to other flawless games like chess. These kind of games are flawless because of their reduced amount of variables and very strict rules, which leaves no room for error or ambiguity on the game's side that could be exploited by the player to gain an unfair advantage. Nonetheless, this controlled number of rules produce an infinite amount of possibilities during the game, since player choice has an immense influence on the development of every game played. The possible outcomes of the game are also very clearly defined, with chess for example ending with either a win for one of the players or a draw, and with every game ending in a game over in the case of Tetris. In this regard, simplicity is Tetris's best quality. But what makes Tetris special is that it isn't just a game. Tetris is a video game, and necessarily so. It uses the technological medium it inhabits in such a way that it is impossible to create a physical game of Tetris, especially one that works at the speed that is attainable in the video game format, feeding random pieces, moving them and clearing lines in a matter of less than seconds. The flawlessness Tetris achieves is especially rare in the world of video games, where programming errors usually lead to bugs and glitches that can be exploited by the players to gain an advantage, or can affect the game by making it ambiguous or unfair in certain situations. This flawlessness allows Tetris to perfect the core mechanics and systems it implements, systems that also appear in many other games, but generally in a much more flawed and convoluted way. The core systems of Tetris can be mainly reduced to the challenge the game presents to the player and the risk and reward system they engage with while playing the game. The perfection of these elements is precisely one of the reasons Tetris is so appealing. Let's start by analyzing the type of challenge Tetris presents to the player. For almost every game, we expect difficulty to grow along the player's ability to manage the game's mechanics. The game should start easy as the player begins to learn how to interact with it, but challenge should increase as the player develops their skills when playing. Ideally, the challenge should increase in a way that never makes the game so hard as to annoy the player, or so easy that the player gets bored. In a complex modern game with a lot of variables and mechanics, this task becomes extremely difficult, and even the games that manage it carefully can end up with big spikes of difficulty, or with its systems exploited, to make the game easier. However, the case of Tetris is different, since the game always gets faster until the player hits a game over, and can be started at a higher speed. 
This allows for the difficulty curve to be extremely malleable, and letting every player suited themselves for their own skill with the game. A beginner will start at a low speed and not get too far into the game, but as the player gets better, they will be able to survive longer and start the game at higher speeds, gaining more points in the process. The curve also presents no spikes in difficulty, since the speed at which the pieces fall down increases at a steady rate, until eventually becoming unmanageable, always pushing the player into a challenging situation, no matter their level of skill. Tetris strikes that perfect, easy-to-learn, hard-to-master balance, and while being welcoming and understandable for newcomers, it will always hold a challenge and room to grow for more experienced players. I still need to be uh, more consistent, I, I still have so much room to improve. The Next other year, element that Tetris perfects is the risk and reward system it implements. Since clearing more lines at a time grants more points than clearing them separately, the player is always incentivized to create taller structures and wait for a line piece to clear the maximum amount of lines. However, building tall comes at a risk, since you get closer to your eventual doom, which is reaching the top of the screen. In that way, the player is incentivized to keep the structure as low as possible, which contradicts the strategy that grants the most points. The player is forced to constantly juggle between these two opposing concepts and make decisions based on the current landscape of the game. Every Tetris piece carries a decision. Some decisions are better than others, but none are perfect. And as the speed increases, the player has less and less time to decide. Speed is also a variable that the player must decide on, since playing at higher speeds grants more points and the player can choose to start the game on a higher level but that also means the game will be harder to manage. Again, almost every video game implements a risk and reward system. For example, a game like Dark Souls has melee combat that presents the player with three options when defending from an enemy. The low risk, low reward option is to stop the hit using your shield. This is easy to perform by just holding a button, meaning it's low risk, but also consumes some of your stamina and doesn't open the enemy for an attack granting you a low reward. The medium risk, medium reward option is to evade. This has to be timed with the incoming attack, but the window of time to perform it is generous and leaves you better located for an attack, but the enemy can keep attacking you. Finally, the high risk, high reward option is to parry. A parry has to be perfectly timed with the incoming attack and is very hard to perform, but when done correctly, it leaves the enemy open for a devastating critical attack. However, like in many other games, this system can be exploited through glitches or entirely avoided by, for example, using ranged attacks. This is not the case for Tetris. Its risk and reward system can be broken thanks to its simplicity, and there are no low risk, high reward options available. As players become more skilled, they will always be incentivized to take higher risks and earn higher rewards. These are the main mechanical elements that turn Tetris into a fundamentally flawless video game and make it so appealing in the process. But other elements apart from the game's mechanics have also contributed to the success of Tetris. Tetris has a very wide audience since it is very accessible and easy to understand. Even a person that has never played a video game in their lives can look at Tetris, understand what is going on and engage with it, since it uses two universally understood concepts, blocks fitting into each other and falling by gravity. While most other video games have a sense of identity using characters or a defined art style that could be disliked by some people, Tetris doesn't have either. Its pieces or tetrominos don't leave room for liking or disliking since they are simply geometrical shapes, which are universal. In fact, the player doesn't need any specific cultural background to understand what is going on. Unlike most other games, even simple ones like Space Invaders, where you need to understand what a gun and an alien spaceship is in order to grasp what is happening. The concept of Tetris is so understandable that a real space invader that has never even interacted with a human could probably play it. And if the alien comes from a technological civilization, they probably would have already invented a similar game, since geometrical shapes and gravity are such universal concepts. While its rational and mathematical side is very apparent, 
Tetris also has a subtle but very strong human element to it, tapping into what our brains universally enjoy. All of us share the desire to self-improve. Just do it! And appears in Tetris when trying to beat your own scores, along with the natural sense of competition that comes when trying to beat the scores of other players. Tetris also adds an element of gambling, since the pieces are randomized, and in the age of loot boxes and casinos, it is clear that the human brain likes taking up the risky odds of building tall and especially feeling lucky when the desired piece arrives. But there is more than that. Deep down, under the skin, within the purest essence of the game, there is something innately attractive and fascinating about Tetris. One of the first formal studies of the phenomenon was at Harvard Medical School in the year 2000. Participants played the game for seven hours each, spread over the course of three days. In pop culture, Tetris is generally identified with order, with neatly fitting shapes into one another in the most efficient way. But that represents only one side of the coin. Remarkably, 63% of the participants, almost two-thirds, reported seeing imagery from the game hours after they finished playing, often just as they were falling asleep. As speed increases, order becomes harder to achieve, and chaos starts to dominate the game. This fact on its own was newsworthy. But even more surprising, amnesic patients with brain damage that prevents them from forming new memories also reported seeing game imagery well after they'd finished playing. For a while, we are able to keep fighting against it and keep surviving while maintaining a certain amount of order. But eventually, things will spiral out of control, chaos will take over, and the game will end. These participants were unable to recall having ever played the game but their descriptions matched those of players with perfect memories. Like yin and yang, there is no order without chaos, and Tetris accepts that reality and turns it into a video game. Blocks. They all saw blocks falling through space, sometimes rotating or fitting neatly into empty spaces between other blocks. Some participants also reported seeing completed lines disappearing. There is something wired deep down in our brains that attracts us towards these shapes and the constant battle between order and chaos that they represent. The Tetris effect, where players reported seeing tetrominos in their daily life after playing the game, has been widely studied, and even applied as medicine for cases of eyesight problems and for treating certain traumatic stress disorders. These pieces and this game are able to stay with us and are rooted deeper into our brains and our nature than we even realize. Tetris is a game that, like life, is about managing situations as they randomly appear, fighting against chaos through a desperate desire to maintain order, but deep down knowing that eventually our fight will be over. Chaos and death will prevail. The journey is what truly matters, despite how difficult it may seem at times. Because Tetris, like life, makes us all equal in the end. And there is nothing more human than that. Oh, what could you be afraid?